as I mentioned before, Dave Connell is Scientific Data Coordinator at the Antarctic, Australian Antarctic Division. Oh, there's a nice picture. So it's my pleasure to um, hand over now to Dave to tell us a little bit about the inner workings of the Australian Antarctic Data Centre from somebody who actually works there and whose day job is data management. Thanks, Dave. Yep, thanks, Jerry. Um, yeah, so as Jerry just explained, I work for the Australian Antarctic Division. Um, I'm part of the Australian Antarctic Data Centre, and our job is to sort of manage all the data that um, the Antarctic Division Division produces. So Jerry asked me to talk a little bit about the project cycle that we use here as well as sort of what we do with our metadata regarding harvesting. Okay, so the AADC, we were established about 20 years ago, 1995, and as I just mentioned, we've got the responsibility for management of all the data that comes out of the Australian Antarctic Program. So that's the Australian Antarctic Division as well as all our university affiliations and also some international collaborators. There's an Antarctic Treaty, which sort of governs what we do. Uh, that was signed in 1959, initially by 12 countries, I think, but there are many more signatories now. Uh, and one of the crucial parts of that is that it says that scientific observations and results from Antarctica shall be exchanged and made freely available. So we have this big international mandate that sort of says that we have to push our data out there and make sure that people can access it and use it whenever they want to. So we're a fairly... Uh, we're not, not, not as big as we used to be, but we are. We still run a fairly big science program. We run about 60 science projects each summer season, all throughout the um, the, the whole year. Uh, it's very multidisciplinary, so we have sciences covering everything from geology to biology to atmospheric physics to glaciology, oceanography. You name it, we it's, it's a good chance we'll do something <laughs> like it or fairly close. So the project cycle, um, I also should point out, since this is an Antarctic project, I have put a few gratuitous Antarctic images through here to keep you um, amused and entertained. But anyway, the AAP project cycle, so the way that uh, things work in our organisation is that scientists will come up with an idea for what they want to study, um, they'll put this together as an application and then they get sent off to a, a, an independent committee who reviews all the applications and decides which um, scientific projects are worth pursuing. Once that's happened, the scientists, this is once again from a data management perspective, are then required to write a data management plan. So that spells out all of the data that they think they are likely to be collecting during the course of the project, as well as estimates as to how much of it there will be and when they expect to hand it in. And that's been a fairly invaluable tool for us in the data center because it lets us forecast how many, how much data storage um, we're likely to need, as well as as well as knowing what data we can expect to come in. Because at the end of the project, we then have to start sort of chasing people to, to get all the data. And this data management plans really help us sort of, it gives us a shopping list of things we can use, a week, a week, a things to look for. So after the data management plan is approved, the scientists go off and do their research. And then at the end of that process, they start cataloging their data with um, metadata, metadata records. They archive the data in our data center, and then we'll all, and that means we then publish the data, and we'll assign it a data set DOI so that the scientists can use that for the citations, um, and also just to you know, really get their name out there a little bit more. Obviously, once they've got the DOI, then they can use that in their own papers, so they can self-cite um, their own data. And all of that is underpinned by the AAP data policy. And there's a link there on screen. What sort of follows all that is that the um, when scientists then come back and say we'd like to do another project, we review how they, um, they've they previously gone with their data management. So we'll have a look over um, their previous track record to see if they've been good at archiving and cataloging their data or if it's something that they don't particularly care about. Um, what happens then is that we will then give them a score of their data management practices and then the external committee that um, reviews all their project applications will take that into account when they're um, when they're deciding whether to approve or reject projects. So scientists, if, if they don't do the right thing and, and, and properly manage their data, it can have an impact on any future work they might want to do. 